Yeah, that we recite hopefully once a week at least. And this is in Surah Al Kahf, chapter 18. The ayah is number 28. One ayah. If we were to spend hours talking about this ayah, it would not be enough. But unfortunately, it's our habit to skim over important things and focus and spend a lot of time over trivial things. This is human nature, unfortunately, especially was addressing the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, ayah number 28. Allah Azza wa Jal commands his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam by saying, Wasbir nafsaka ma'alladheena yad'oona rabbahum bilghadati wal ashi yuriduna wajha. It's composed of three sort of paragraphs. So the first one would be, and keep yourself patient, O Muhammad, by being with those who call upon their Lord in the morning and the evening, seeking his face, meaning out of sincerity, for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. Now, be or keep yourself patient. Patience is divided into three types, as we all know. To be patient on doing good deeds, you need patience. You need to be patient to wake up for Fajr prayer and make wudu with this, in this cold weather and to walk from your ho home to the masjid to attend the salat in the congregation, with the congregation. You, nobody can do this. Seriously, nobody can do this except those who have huh, patience, sabr. Because they are doing this seeking Allah's face. So they have the energy. So this is the first type of patience. So the second type of patience is to be patient not to do haram. And haram is very easy to get because it is going downhill. And always going downhill is the most easiest thing. You just drop. While climbing up is difficult. And in this country, and many other countries nowadays, fitna is all over the place. Whether it is in buying a house in mortgage, riba-based loan, one of the seven major sins in Islam. Sheikh, but we have to live. Pay rent. <laughs> I've been paying rent for the past 40 years, alhamdulillah. For two houses, not one. Poor me. I don't have a property. I don't have a house. So what? I'm paying. I'm living. No, Sheikh, I have to have this condo. It's been my dream. And I have to have this 50-inch uh, uh, TV screen. And then I have to have the, and an automatic garage and, and the whole nine yards. Well, suit yourself. So to be patient from doing haram is also one of the types of being patient. So much fitna outside for us men. I'm a family man. If you push me too far, I just might. So they say. Third type of patience is the patience on Allah's calamities. And this I have nothing to do with because an earthquake took place. A volcano, a tornado, a kafir country is bombarding us with bombs and killing our children and displacing our families. What did I do? Nothing. This is Allah's test for you. What are you going to do? Be patient. But again, this is not our topic, patience. This requires an extensive ex explanation and elaboration so that you would understand what am I doing on earth? Am I just supposed to work nine to five, commute two hours to job and back? This is what Allah created me for? Allah is testing you. Each one of us is being tested. Are you passing the test? Are you being patient? Suit yourself. So Allah says, Wasbir nafsak. 
and keep yourself patient by being with those who call upon their Lord in the morning and the evening. So what kind of patience is this? Number one, number two, or number three? The Half an hour later. <laughs> what are we doing here, guys? <laughs> it's Maghrib, it's not Isha. We haven't had lunch yet. What type of the three patients is this? Number one, to be patient upon ta'a, upon doing good deeds. So Allah is telling, commanding his messenger, and by default, this command is for us to be patient. So many times it's difficult for us to respond to an invitation of a friend to attend a talk or a circle of knowledge or a banquet for aqiqa or walima, which I'm obliged to uh, respond to. But I feel tempted to go elsewhere to attend a hockey match, maybe some sports event, maybe some gathering that has haram elements into it, or watch a movie. So this is the temptation we are getting. You have to be patient. Make yourself patient by being with those. This command fits us as a glove in this kafir country. If you neglect having buddies, Muslim friends, society, community, an environment that would, you would hang out with, be with, people that would have your back, it's not long before you go astray. Why? This is human nature. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, إِنَّمَا يَأْكُلُ الذِّئْبُ مِنَ الْغَنَمِ الْقَاصِيَةِ A wolf would not attack the herd of sheep because they're together. He waits until one of them sheep says, I've had enough with these guys. I'm going for a smoke. And it drifts a little bit away from the congregation. This is when the wolf attacks. And likewise, this is what shaitan does. If you're on your own, shaitan hits you the hardest. But when you, when you are with the Muslims, with the community, Assalamu alaikum, alaikum assalam. Ha jazakallahu khayran, barakallahu feek. Akhi, this is some sambusa, this is some shurba. We have this, we have that. Let's go uh, play football together. It's a Muslim environment. You still belong. You have this belonging. You have this identity. But when you don't, you start يعني, drifting. You start going astray. Mm, tomorrow, maybe do your hair like Mr. T. You shave it from the sides and I don't know what, tomahawk or what they call it, uh, I, whatever. And then a few weeks later, maybe a little earring. Looks cool. In one ear, not both, huh? So that they, they don't mix you up. <laughs> then maybe you get a tattoo. A little bit, the bling blings. Mashallah. And, whoa, what is this? And then you change your name. Huh? From Muhammad to Mo. Mashallah. Everybody knows. Short for moron. Anyhow, so what is this? You've lost your identity, Akhi. And this is dangerous. You have to have people that have your back. Akhi, what are you doing? Haram. When we're eating, Akhi, you're eating with your left. Eat with your right. Okay, I need someone to put me back on the straight path to remind me. Akhi, you're wearing your finger in the haram finger. You can't wear it in the index and the middle finger. This is haram. I didn't know that. Know that. Now you know. And so on. People tell me, Akhi, I haven't seen you for in, in Fajr Salat for a couple of weeks. Watch out, tara, yani, you're in danger. Last Juma, I didn't see you. And, and they remind you, you remind them, and you keep on doing this until you meet Allah in Jannah. But if you don't, you have a problem. Um, seeking his face, that is acceptance and for sincerity. Phrase number two. And 
Let not your eyes pass beyond them desiring adornments of the worldly life. وَلَا تَعْدُ عَيْنَاكَ عَنْهُمْ تُرِيدُ زِينَةَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَةِ They do. But even if I go to Alaska, I can do things, you know, I can uh, misbehave. Nobody knows me, but here everybody knows me. This is the difference. What's driving you, what's pushing you? affairs is, is, is ever in neglect. So this is a description of an individual whom Allah Azza wa Jal told us not to obey. What is this description? So that we be aware from meeting such people and stay and keeping our distance from number one. Do not obey one whose heart we have made heedless of our remembrance. So characteristic number one, he does not remember Allah. He does not make dhikr. Whatever you sit with him, all what he talks about is worldly matters, cars, real estate, interest rates, movies, music, celebrities, women, partying, anything that is worldly. Sometimes it's fun to sit with such people because we like spare time, we like idle talk, but it hardens your heart. It's like quicksand. The more you stand and try to move, the further down you sink without you knowing it. So Allah Azza wa Jal is telling you, someone whose heart is heedless from my remembrance, keep him out of the agenda, keep him out of your contact list. Then the second characteristics, and who follows his desire, so someone whose compass is not the Quran and the Sunnah. He does things because his heart tells, it, tells him to do it. He follows his desires and whims. Akhi, this is haram. Uh, yeah, but it feels good. Yeah, I have, I'm having fun when doing it. Well, it's an issue of dispute among scholars. Everything is an issue of dispute among scholars. Everything. Ibn Jinni, one of the scholars, and he was a linguist, used to have a, sh a seat like mine here and preach his people. One day he had to go for an errand for half an hour, so he asked his father to fill in his place. So the father said, I don't know what to answer people. He said to him, listen, anyone who comes to you and asks you a question, say there is an issue of dispute. There are two opinions in it. <laughs> Khalas. So a guy said, Sheikh, I was enraged and I said to my wife, I divorce you, I divorce you, I divorce you three times in one sitting. It's an issue of dispute. <laughs> Sheikh, I ate camel's meat. Should I perform wudu? It's an issue of dispute. Sheikh, I did this, I did that. Everybody's asking, he said, two opinions, two opinions. And he's right. Sometimes more, but two it would do. One smart aleck stood and said, Sheikh, is there doubt in the existence of Allah? So he said, yes, it's an issue of dispute. <laughs> the whole masjid came to beat the heck out of him. And it so happened that his son came. He said, wait, 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 what are you doing? He said, didn't you hear what this crazy man's, old man said? He said, yeah, yeah, what did he say? He said, we said, afillahi shakkun. And he said, there are two opinions. He said, yeah, yeah, this afillahi jar majroor. And he took it to the linguist side of interpretation. Whether this is mubtada, muakhar, mubtada, muqaddam, and shibh jumla, etc. And he, of course, <laughs> being who he is, gave them a lecture in like 20 minutes, and the guy said, hmm, okay, sounds good. So, unfortunately, most of us follow this methodology when judging things. My wife wants to go to visit her uh, um, mother in uh, Tennessee. I can't go. So she insists. I Google it. And Sheikh Google says, it's an issue of dispute. So go. My son wants to buy a, uh, um, these, I don't know what they call them, headsets. Sound blasters or whatever. And I know he listens to music. 
and I tell him it's haram. He said, there's an issue of dispute in music. Okay, fair enough. Interest. One of the funniest fatwas I've heard, that's really yani, damaging. If you are in a kafir country, it's okay to get an interest-based loan for mortgage for your house, but only the first house. Mashallah, because you're in need. Well, but that's a major sin. It's okay. We have a fatwa from X, Y, Z. The fatwa council in uh, North Alaska or whatever, I don't know, or Zimbabwe. And they said it's okay, providing it's the first house. You can get a house, a mortgage, a riba. One of the seven major sins, Allah curses those who deal it with it and wage war against them. It's okay, the first time, because you're in need. I thought to myself, I don't have my wife. And I'm in need. So, mm, can I find a fatwa that says it's okay to yani, have a one night stand? Same thing? What do you guys think? I'm in heat. <laughs> this is nonsense. This is playing around with the rules of Allah Azza wa Jal. And the problem is that the Muslims who follow their whims and desires, well, a big sheikh with a big beard, yeah, not as big as Sheikh Hassan's, but it's, it's considerably big. Uh, he said it's halal. So I took his fatwa. What's his name, Akhi? Mm, I don't know. Where does he work? Mm, I, I have no, no idea. How do you know he's a sheikh? Maybe he's a DJ. <laughs> Wallahi, I never thought of that. I didn't see any bling blings, but. So how do you follow in your religion? Halal and haram, people you do not know, you cannot trust. Ibn Sirin says, This knowledge, the fiqh, the fsir, and, and the aqidah, this is religion. So look and search and scrutinize those you are learning your religion from because this is not an easy thing to do. Finally, because I have already went over time, Allah Azza wa Jal says, and um, whose affair is even in neglect. The third characteristics. His affairs are in neglect, whether in dunya or in akhirah. Never you will find him doing something that has benefit in this dunya or in the akhirah. Three characteristics. Number one, that his heart is heedless. Whoa, these three characteristics are about the individuals we're supposed to what? Not associate ourselves with, with or, or obey, correct? But aren't these characteristics in us? Aren't, aren't we, number one, heedless from Allah's remembrance? Number two, we follow our desires and whims. Number three, our affairs are ever in neglect. We have a big problem. What are we gonna do about it? We need to fix things. And you need someone to tell you that you need to fix things. And this is not your everyday reminder. This is a slap on the face, though slapping the face is haram in Islam, but this is metaphorical. Don't sue me. Huh? So this is a wake-up call for all of us to check our contact list. Who do we have on our contact list? Are they among those who remember Allah Azza wa Jal in the morning, in the evening? Are they the ones who get us closer to Allah? Are they the ones who are steadfast on Islam and not heedless? If they are, then you're in good hands, and inshallah you'll end up in Jannah. If you're not, this is dangerous and you have to rectify your affairs before it's too late. Hada wallahu a'lam wa nisbatul ilmi ilayhi aslam wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Oh, jazak. Think they have like questions or? Questions. Okay. Anybody have questions? It reminds me of Saudi, it's too hot. Yani I, I, I get like Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. I go outside, I'm freezing my backside. I come here, I'm sweating. I don't know. I'm not wearing even a jacket. Assalamu alaikum. 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 Assalamu
كنا نتمنى انك الدرس هذا تعطيه ما شاء الله يو هاف اليكونت انجلش لكن في نفس الوقت تعطيه باللغه العربيه لانه هو لسان القران ويعني وعاء القران. What, you, what, what you're saying is 100% true. Arabic is the language of the Quran and it's my tongue. It's my tongue, not my mother's. My mother, Allah, she died. She had her own tongue, but I, it's my tongue. But the problem is that how many of us know Arabic? Raise your hands. Take a look. Take a look. How much? مش مشكلة على الأقل إيه قد منا يعني عطيت عشرين دقيقة بالإنجليزية من دار الإنصاف تعطي عشر دقائق بالعربية. ها تكلمت معك بالعربية إن شاء الله الآية واضحة وصريحة ذكرتها باللغة العربية ولكن ليس من الإنصاف ولا من العدل أنه يأتي أقوام لا يتكلمون اللغة العربية كل من يوجد في هذه البلد يحسن الإنجليزية والله أعلم. وجزاك الله خيرا وعاشوا في جدة وعاشوا في الرياض وعاشوا في الظهران وفي الدمام إذا كانوا يكذبون عندما لم يرفعوا أيديهم لم يكذب ما قال حاشا لله لكن العربية يعني هي اللسان الأول في بيت الله طيب في بيت الله and you don't want to answer and then ask. I'm not going to choose. The, the, the MC chooses. Where is he, by the way? Where did he go? Oh, sure. You choose, Sheikh. Yeah, Bismillah. Go ahead. Yeah, earlier you said something about the rings being haram to wear on certain Okay, the brother is asking about a comment I made where I said that it is not permissible to wear the rings in the index finger nor in the middle finger. This is related to a hadith narrated by Ali ibn Abi Talib, may Allah be pleased with him, in Kitab al-Libasi wa zina in Sahih al-Imam Muslim. So it is one of the highest authentic hadiths. He said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prohibited us from wearing rings in the index and the middle finger. That's the evidence. This young boy. Let this young boy. Let him, let him this young boy. First of all, the brother is asking a person who has problem of passing wind every time he makes wudu. And this is continuous. So it's one of two. Either it comes at a specific time, continuously, like for half an hour, and you will miss salah with the congregation. But after the congregation, there is another hour or an hour and a half where the time of the prayer is still existing. It's not out. In this case, you must not pray with the congregation. You must wait until your uh, stomach is fine and you're not passing wind, you make wudu and you and pray in your home. Case two, someone who keeps on passing wind like 24 seven. So mashallah, he like, is like a jet. The guy is, don't eat tacos, number one. <laughs> Secondly, if this is continuous, this is known in the books of fiqh as ma'dhur a one who's excused. So because there's a lot of hardship for you and the salat time would be expired before you could do anything, and there's nothing you could do about it, scholars say that between the beginning of the salat and the end of the salat, whenever you make wudu, then you can pray even if you pass wind because you're exempted from that and there is evidence for it, as in the hadith of Fatima bint Hubaysh, who used to have istihada, may Allah be pleased with her, and the Prophet instructed her of the same, and Allah knows best. Why do you have a security guard? And my second question is, if you don't trust us, why do you have security If I do what? Do what? 
Ok. First of all, I have a security guard because I can afford it. <laughs> Second, secondly, se secondly, I have not stopped anyone from coming to shake hands with me or to take selfies with me and I ha don't have a glow around me where I prevent people from getting close to me. This is not me. The organizers are, yani, khair, thought that I am a VIP and maybe uh, uh, mixed me up with Malcolm X. I don't know. <laughs> so they brought me a bodyguard. And so uh, well, what would I do? And the guy is, the, is a brother, mashallah. I, I don't see any problem in that. Next time, maybe people will argue, why are you wearing this uh, Saudi dress on your head? May, why don't you wear a, a hoodie? Or Come on, guys. And he utilize the time in asking things that are related to your religion. So many people ask questions. Not you, Akhi. I'm, I'm generally speaking. And if you ask them, what are the conditions of Salat? Said, the I don't know. What is the what are the pillars of salat? What are the mandatory acts of salat? What is the zakat threshold of the camels, of the cows, of the sheep? He said, no, I have no idea. There's a we have a, a big problem when we do not ask things that would get us closer to Allah. And Allah knows best. <laughs> What's your advice for the ones that they follow the fatwas, they follow the sheikh's opinions and scholars' opinions? What is your advice for those people that they... Allah Azza wa Jal said twice in the Quran, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask the people of knowledge if you do not know. So we are instructed in the Quran to ask the people of knowledge. Now this is different to those who cherry pick those who go and want a solution that fits their desires and whims, not that com is complied, complying with the Quran and the Sunnah. I'll give you an example. A person who loves to listen to music goes to the vast majority of scholars of Islam, the four schools of thought, they all say haram. The school of thought of Abu Hanifa, Shafi'i, Malik, Ahmed ibn Hanbal. They all say music is haram. I still have this in me. Tay Tay has a concert in Las Vegas. I want to watch that. So what should I do? I go and look in books of fiqh until I find a, an old yellow paged book that is like a gazillion years ago. And the guy says, and it's an issue of dispute. And it seems to be makruh. That's the one. So I take that. Now, later on, I have another need to allow my wife to travel without a mahram, whether for hajj or for anything else. And I know that the Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, it is not permissible for a, ma a woman who believes in Allah and the day of judgment to travel without a mahram. This is in the Sahih. This is what the Prophet said. Do I need a fatwa? If I'm a Muslim, no, but still, my wife is nagging. What's new? Anyhow, so I go and open the books of fiqh, and I start with the, the yellow-paged book, the old one that said that music is makruh. In the first sentence, it's haram. I go to all books, haram, 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 and then I find a, a group of scholars who said, uh, I, yeah, okay, so it's makruh. And I take that. Okay, but these guys said in the beginning that music is haram. Why aren't you following them? This is cherry picking. This is like taking your cart in the aisles of the supermarket and choosing and picking whatever you want. This is not Islam. Because at the end of the day, when you start cherry picking, you'll end up formulating a religion that has no relationship to Islam. It's a new religion, your religion. Something that is custom made. And this is not Islam. Islam is like Allah said, Today 
Today I have completed your religion. Islam is complete. It's finished. You, no one can come and say, okay, at the time of the Prophet والسلام, uh, wine was haram. Today we have screwdrivers. So mm, it's okay. No, it's not okay. Well, it's caught on the rocks. It's not okay. Tequila, haram. It's not wine, but it is intoxicating. So people who want to cherry pick will find many, many ways to go about. And this is not for the layman. Laymen cannot go through books, book, books of fiqh and cherry pick. You have to be a student of knowledge who fears Allah, not follow his whims and desires. You want to find which is the closest to pleasing Allah, not the closest to pleasing people. And this is why Ibn Uthaymeen, may Allah have mercy upon his soul, said that the scholars are three. Alimu dawla, alimu ummah, wa alimu millah. The scholars are three categories. Number one, a scholar of the state. When Simon says something, he just signs and stamps. Whatever the uh, rulers say, he does exactly what they want. And he manages to do a good job because people trust him. Category number two, alimu ummah, a scholar of the nation. In the sense that, what do you guys want to listen to? Um, I'm here, just tell me, okay. So he caters for the people's needs and what they need and what they want to hear. And this is not a genuine scholar. Unfortunately, a lot of us are like this. We want people to have a good time. And if we can't break the rules, might as well try to bend them a bit. The third one is alimu millah is the scholar of the religion. He says what he says, could care less about what the people say because he's giving what pleases Allah. He's following the footsteps of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and not looking for likes, followers, people to praise him or compliment him. And Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ala Muhammad. Security. Zakallah <laughs> khair.